Alrighty guys, so this is going to be a short follow-up video or part two, if you will, for some other improvements and upgrades I did to my Vegas. So I've been owning it for half a year now. It did a whole bunch of trips and I'm just going to show you what else we did. Alright, so let's start from up front. I did replace uh, the headlight bulbs. The factory ones were just not powerful enough and driving at night was a nightmare. So I got the LEDs here and here from Amazon. Also got an LEDs here. So now it's literally day and night difference. Also, as I was working on the lights, I noticed that the fresh air intake, right, for the blower AC, it was just a bunch of plastic tubes just laying down there in the corner. And actually one of them was filled with water. I assume it was a rainwater somehow. So what I did is a, I don't know if you can see it, but I, I used like a three inch T, PVC T, and I added a filter. Because apparently the manufacturer doesn't care what kind of air is coming into the camper. It's just um, two tubes. They were kind of laying right there above the wheel. And there, there was way too much of the uh, tubing, way too much. So I cut most of it out and I put a filter. It's washable so I can take it out, you know, wash it maybe once a year. Um, so this makes sure that I have clean air going into the camper. So that's that. Moving on, let's see what else we did. Okay, this is the big one. So I did put a solar panel on the roof and I'm gonna climb up in a second to show you. I put two solar panels without drilling a single hole in the roof and I'll show you how. So this is the fridge uh, vent, right? And I use the vent opening, if you can see it, right there to run the solar panel cables. And this is the charge controller. I know it sits on the side, but it doesn't really affect the operation. So this is the wires going in and these are the wires going uh, into the camper to the battery. Um, yeah, I cannot see the charge controller when the cover is closed, but I really don't care. The solar is working, unit's being charged, so that's what it matters. Let me hit a pause and show you how it looks on the roof. Alright, so this is the roof view. No holes were drilled to attach these solar panels. These are the corners that are actually glued to the roof, and then the panels are actually screwed to the corners. Alright, so this is how this was done. And I got room for more panels. All right, another interesting upgrade that I had to do. So you know how these fridges, they run on a propane and on electric, right? Uh, and usually, so that's the electrical connection. Usually this outlet would sit on its own breaker switch and electrical panel. But the problem with this one was it was not. And what was happening whenever I would turn on my inverter unit, uh, the fridge would think that AC power is available and it would switch to AC, ultimately draining my batteries really fast. Uh, so what I did, I actually got rid of that outlet. That That's where it was. right? So there was one tent coming in and out. I basically closed the loop so the other outlets still have power, but I pulled the separate extension cord uh, directly to the breaker. There was one empty slot and installed extra breaker. So now my fridge doesn't switch to AC when I turn on DC uh, inverter on, if it makes sense to you. All right, let's see what else we did. Let's go around. A um, couple other improvements. So this electrical box in the previous video, maybe you remember, maybe I'll put a screenshot. This was like a cluster mess of wires. Um, they were kind of like popping in the middle, obstructing the axis. So I fixed it by turning this electrical box sideways. All right. And that allowed me to kind of, because all these terminals, they were facing to the wall, which I didn't like to begin with because there was very, it was really hard to like tighten them or maintain them. I like to, you know, at least every couple months check these terminals and also spray them with a, like a protective spray. So I turned the whole box sideways, now I can access the terminals and these wires are way neater. I put some clamps here, so that's another upgrade. 
All right, what else? I had to replace the city water connector. The way it was made, the factory one, wouldn't rotate like this. So one of the renters, when they were unscrewing the water hose, they managed to unthread it from the pipe that sits inside and making it leak internally really bad. Uh, so whenever they would turn on the water, it started leaking right down there. So I actually had to open, take this uh, shower access door out completely, get inside to find out that this whole thing just unthreaded from the pipe. So I put a different one. This one has uh, the top that spins independently. So that's fixed, but that's thumbs down to Thor for another poor piece of design. All right, another story I had. So, you know, like every generator has a breaker, right? Inside has a 110 breaker that trips once in a while. Well, not only it's super inconvenient to get to it, right? You have to open this, you have to open the generator cover, and then you have to fish your hand through to reset it. My breaker also burned down on one of the rental trips. And in order to replace it, I literally had to lower the entire generator, raise the camper, lower the generator, take it out. And when I did all this, I was like, well, what if it burns again or dies? So what I did, I relocated the breaker right here. So, um, I mean, I would suggest doing this only if you're electrically inclined and you know what you're doing, but I moved the breaker right here so it's a straight wire coming out of the generator and if it trips now instead of asking my renters to fish their hand god knows where um uh, i just ask him to do it right here so that's another upgrade i think this is it for the outside actually it's not i will give you a little peek so you know how thor vegas comes with a uh quote unquote heated silver tanks well apparently it's just the two tiny heating pads that you know and they're exposed to the outside so what i did is i bought some self-adhesive insulation thermal insulation and i wrapped up as much as i could both black and gray tank and i added two extra heating pads before that so now it's really working i'm actually planning to do some elbow heaters right here. They're available on Amazon, like a 12 volt. So I just, I couldn't get it installed before it went to really cold and I needed to be warm so they adhere. So I'm gonna do it in the spring, but I also gonna insulate these corners and I'm gonna put one heating pad here, one here, one on each elbow and wrap it all up. All right, so this is done. Now we're actually going inside. So as you can see, a lot of upgrades, but a lot of them are actually not as much of the upgrades, but just fixing the manufacturer's uh, poor design. All right, the seats. I did some research, so apparently there was a whole flock of manufacturers, different RV brands that at some year they were buying uh, seats from some Chinese manufacturer and it was peeling, including these seats. When I bought them, they were like, the bottom was almost gone. Um, so I went through a whole bunch of different seat covers on Amazon and finally got to these. These are really nice quality. Um, they fit well. Um, you can see like, see, this is original leather. So that's, and that's just a little bit. I actually do have covers for these. I just haven't installed them yet. I just wanted to show you the difference. But down underneath this, it's all like 90% like this. So these seat covers really help, really make a difference. All right, let's see what else. Uh, in the previous video, somebody com commented, commented, commented <laughs> uh, about access to the fresh water tank. So apparently the fresh water tank sits right underneath this bed, which is cool. I like when the tanks are internal, makes them warmer, but to drain it, you need to lift the mattress, unscrew this uh, bedding cover, which is like four screws, and then you have access to the drain valve, which is a no-go for me because I live in New York and I rent in the winter and I don't want to be taking this bed apart every time I need to drain fresh water tank. So this is what I did. 
Uh, down here, let me turn the heater off really quick. So first of all, I, I relocated the ductwork. It used to be where this door is, and it was just blowing the air straight across, which is kind of dumb. So I moved it here in the corner, um, which is really easy. All right, I moved it here, and where the ductwork was, I did install the access door. You can see it. Uh, I wish it was a black one, but I just had the white one laying around from some previous projects, so I was like, well, I'll just use what I have. So now I put a label, right? Fresh water drain. And you can put your hand in. And what I did, I put a, yeah, let me show you. I put a piece of this yellow tape around the drain valve. And now I can kind of leave my hand. I can find it. I mean, it's pitch black, dark right now. You can't see it. But now I can go in there and drain the fresh water tank without undoing the bed. And this closes. Also, I installed another heater pad for the fresh water tank. There was a 12 volts going nearby. It's thermostatically controlled. And I also put on off switch with indicator light. So my renters and I can see when the fresh water tank is being heated. I mean, the tank itself is internal, but why not? All right. And this was kind of like add on while I had all this apart and open. Here's the furnace off. Some of my renters told me that it's really inconvenient that there is nowhere to charge the phone in the bedroom because the only outlet you have is out there on the top. But if you plug your phone in there, uh, like what is it supposed to hang down? Well, first I added a couple shelves. I added one shelf over here, one shelf over here, and one like little drawer in the top but here's what I did while I had all this apart I installed so I installed two USB ports right in this drawer since I had everything open and it was like extra five minutes and I had those laying around from previous projects so now renters can open the drawer and access uh, put their phones for a charge so that's another upgrade and my overall thoughts about Thor units, I had a lot of questions from people renting those and in, in, on the YouTube, like, what do you think about Thor motorhomes? Honestly, I'm not impressed. I'll be honest with you, I'm not impressed at all. On the other side, I'm not surprised because most of the manufacturers build, build the units like this nowadays. I mean, they don't put their soul so to say they don't put their mind uh it looks like they're not really making any efforts to make those units practical and functional and and life proof they just make it look nice but all the little details like you know i was really disappointed when i saw uh how the air inlet for the ac and the heater it's just a piece of plastic ductwork that just lays above the wheel collecting water and dust like come on people um and, and you can imagine there's hundreds of thousands of those units driving like that and other small things like absence of the access door it's definitely something that manufacturers just didn't care about um and so on and so on oh another upgrade okay see I'm, i should have a list anyways and it can be used on any camper. So the problem that I faced was is in the summer in all of my campers when the fridge is full uh, The cold is not reaching to everything The reason because this is the source of the cold. All right, or actually this uh, grill absorbs the heat and if it's full if the fridge is full uh, your produce your groceries down there will go way above 50 degrees. Um, I used to work in the HVAC industry, so I kind of understand how heat dissipation and heat transfer works. So anyways, make it simple. This is something you can buy on Amazon. It's a fans that actually clip to the radiator grill. Um, I wired this one in particular. I ran the wire through the drain tube all the way outside and hooked it up to 12 volts. And my other camper actually managed to wire it to the light bulb. All right, uh, right here. 
uh, just make sure you wear it before the door sensor. Otherwise, this fan will stop every time you close the door. But what it does, you turn it on and it starts moving cold air, pushing it from the radiator and kind of makes the air circulate. It makes a huge difference in the summertime, especially if you're traveling with a full fridge. So here you go. That's another upgrade I almost missed. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, uh, write it in the comments and I'll be glad to answer them or give you the links for all the stuff I used for these upgrades. Thanks for watching.